So this is what, my fifth video on the matter now? I apologize if it feels like I'm focusing too much on this topic, but if you've been following my channel for a while now, then you'll know that I release new videos about a story as it continues to develop. While I'd like to move on from the controversy surrounding Philip Mewson, turns out the damage he left behind was more extensive than we originally anticipated, and I think it's worth discussing. By now, you all probably have a pretty solid idea of what happened. YouTuber Boomstick Gaming posted a review of Dead Cells on July 24th, 2018. Philip published his own written and video review two weeks later on August 6th, Boomstick posted a video with damning evidence that the review was plagiarized. IGN removed Philip's article and video review from the site while they conducted an investigation. And finally, the outlet apologized to all afflicted parties before promptly firing Philip. A few days later, Philip Mewson shot himself in the foot by releasing a disingenuous apology video on his YouTube channel. While he did apologize to IGN and kept saying he'll take full responsibility as the editorial lead on the Dead Cells review, he never flat out admitted that he plagiarized someone else's work. He said that there were many circumstances surrounding the plagiarism allegations without ever elaborating on what that meant. He claimed that what happened was completely unintentional, as if to imply that plagiarism can happen by accident. And when he directly addressed Boomstick Gaming, he never apologized for copying his work or admitted copying took place in the first place and instead acted all lovey-dovey with compliments like I have nothing but respect for you and keep doing what you're doing while trying to come off as sympathetic by saying that he knows what it's like to be a small content creator trying to make a name for himself. But perhaps his greatest mistake, by far, was attacking Kotaku editor Jason Schreier, who pointed out in his coverage of this story that Philip's Dead Cells review wasn't his first rodeo with plagiarism, noting similar parallels between Nintendo Life's review of FIFA 18 for Switch and Philip's video review of the game uploaded to his YouTube channel two days later. Not only did Philip absolutely deny allegations that he copied portions of someone else's FIFA 18 review, he also implied that Jason was skewing the definition of plagiarism in his favor, that Jason was simply trying to get clicks off of Philip's name, and that Jason enjoyed kicking people while they're down. Though, of course, everyone else who is anchored to reality knows that Jason is simply doing his job, and he's damn good at it too, which makes it particularly baffling that, despite this being such an open and shut case, Philip invited and challenged Kotaku to dig up more dirt on him, expressing confidence that all his work is original. I was lucky enough to get noticed on IGN through my YouTube channel, which if in case you're wondering, is in fact all of my own original work. So you can keep looking, Kotaku, and, and please let me know if you find anything. Well, suffice to say that Jason took Philip up on his challenge without so much as blinking, and it was not long after that he discovered another instance in which Philip copied portions of Engadget's review of Metroid Samus Returns. But it doesn't end there. While it was expected that Philip would have a past history of plagiarism, as it typically tends to be the case with plagiarists, turns out his history was even more extensive and blatant than many thought. In a tweet published on August 14th, 2018, Jason posted the following message. Over the past few days, I've gotten a bunch of tips like this, about dozens of his videos copying from video game sites, forums, and even Wikipedia. It's unbelievable. The tweet also linked to an example provided by a Twitter user by the name of Joseph, who pointed out a pretty blatant instance of Philip copying a NeoGAF post pretty much verbatim to explain how HD Rumble works on the Nintendo Switch. Check it out for yourself. I did a little bit of research on my own, and here's what I came up with. So basically, a normal Rumble is just a motor which spins, creating a vibration, right? Well, HD Rumble uses linear actuators similar to Apple's Taptic Engine, which is what they use for the new Force Touch stuff in the new iPhones and Apple Watches. See, I believe that these are different in that they are more likely weighted electromagnets rather than a simple spinning motor. This means you can create a much, much more subtle variety of sensations compared to a rumble motor, which is pretty much just a spinning motor, and all those can really do is produce differing speeds of vibration. Notice how Philip did start by explicitly stating, quote, here's what I came up with. It's one thing to gather information and do research from various sources and then present that information in your own way, but it's a whole other thing to just copy and paste an excerpt, read it out loud, and claim this is what you came up with. I mean, he even went as far as reciting, I believe, when the information he provided was, in fact, what NeoGAF user Cartho believed. 
Philip's HD Rumble video, by the way, was published all the way back in January 24th, 2017. So yeah, this isn't just a recent behavior, it's a habit that Philip's gotten very comfortable with over the months and years. Now, it isn't just Jason who's been doing some digging. Website IGN, the most negatively impacted by this whole debacle, started looking into all the articles Philip published during his tenure there, especially after tipsters from all around the internet began uncovering more instances of plagiarism. Kotaku noted in their most recent article how discoveries include excerpts pulled from Polygon, NeoGAF, Wikipedia, and get this, even Philip's LinkedIn job resume was copied from a job template website. You cannot make this shit up. An even more extensive list of evidence can be found in this Reset Era post, where you can see that other sources he's copied from include Nintendo Wire, Goomba Stomp, The Iris, Sydney Morning Herald, and True Achievements. That we know of so far. On top of all that, Philip went as far as plagiarizing other IGN editors' work, like Seth Macy's Octopath Traveler Review, from which Philip pulled excerpts for his own IGN article titled How Octopath Traveler Became Such a Big Hit. As you'd expect, Seth Macy was none too happy about this discovery, tweeting the following message. How are you going to steal from your own company's review of a game? I don't even know how I feel right now. To answer the post's question, no, permission was not given. You don't ask permission to copy someone else's work. You use fucking quotations. With tip after tip coming in, eventually IGN had enough. Dan Stapleton, IGN's executive editor of Reviews, tweeted yesterday on August 14th, 2018 that, quote, FYI, we have seen enough now, both from the thread and our own searches, that we're taking down pretty much everything he did. It's a process, but you'll start seeing stuff come down tonight. He wasn't kidding around, various articles that Philip was involved in, including reviews for Doom and Skyrim for Switch, as well as that Octopath Traveler article he wrote, have been removed from the website and replaced with this message. This article has been removed due to concerns over similarities to work by other authors. The author of this article is no longer employed by IGN. A few other IGN employees also took to Twitter to express their personal feelings on the situation. IGN editorial manager Justin Davis tweeted, quote, Deeply disappointed and upset that it's looking more and more likely that we unwittingly hosted work that was directly lifted from or at best heavily derived from others. I assure you we are taking very active steps to remove it all and make it right. I feel betrayed. To those asking, all of the author's scripted, bylined content is being proactively removed for now, regardless of whether it was found to have an issue. Some of it may be restored later, some important coverage may be redone by other writers, and much of it will remain offline. A few hours later, Vice President and IGN video overseer Fran Mirabella tweeted the following. Tonight, IGN took down more content over concerns some of the work by Philip may have been copied. After 18 years at IGN as a reviewer, a producer, it's despicable. Authors and supporters affected, I am sorry. Nobody at IGN stands for this. This is a personal statement of my own. So yeah, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Philip Mewson's history of plagiarism is being unearthed by the dozens, and IGN is doing the best they can to remedy this unfortunate inadvertent disaster. I really hope Philip eventually comes to understand how much irreparable damage he did to IGN and how many people's livelihoods he's put a damper on. Given how overwhelming the evidence is against them now, he will have to either fade away and pursue another career path or come clean with a proper apology. Even then, there is no guarantee journalists or the gaming community will ever be able to trust him or take him seriously again given how far back his pattern of stealing other people's work stretches and given how he chose to respond to his predicament. The stigma surrounding Philip Mewson in the world of game journalism, or just journalism in general, will be unshakable. Going back to what Philip said in his response about kicking someone while they're down, the thing is, Philip, you didn't just stay down, you got right back up and then spit in everyone's face. You failed to admit your mistakes, you claimed innocence, you further marred your employer's reputation, and you challenged Jason Schreier, of all people, one of the most respected and capable video game journalists, to dig up dirt on you, and by doing so publicly, you essentially challenge the entire internet. I don't know how much in denial you have to be or how big of an ego you have to have to think any of this would end well for you, especially with so many skeletons lying in your journalistic closet, but here we are. This is all on you, buddy. You're going to get a lot of very harsh criticism and some unwarranted threats and harassment, 
and it sucks that you have to go through that, but you invited this on your own. Seriously, man, just have some introspection, look at the havoc you have left around, and actually take responsibility. It isn't gonna wipe away your misdeeds, you're gonna have to live with them, but at least this way everyone can come to an understanding, and we can all move forward. These are just one man's perspective anyway. I'd love to hear what your take is on these recent developments in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.